Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Back for the attack. Everything you see is for sale. We are waking up with watches, and this Wednesday, everything you see is for sale at this email address, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Reach out directly to me, everything from condition questions to accessories, age, providence, purchase price, you got it. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. The description below has the names of the watches, the references, and where available, the prices. Let's start big, real big. Launched for 2019, this is the Grand Seiko Sport SBGA405, better known as the Godzilla, jointly celebrating 20 years of Grand Seiko and Seiko Spring Drive and 65 years of Japan's most famous cinematic ambassador. This is a timepiece that is large in a combination of sapphire and grade five titanium, but 44.5 millimeters has never been more agreeable on a smaller wrist. This is a watch that wears light, wieldy, comfortable, and as you can see, unlike anything else in the Grand Seiko collection, wickedly faceted with the Zeratsu tin plate black polishing method on its titanium facets, and you can see the lovely metallic underlay of the sapphire capped bezel. This timepiece is a circular supernova of light. It has a lovely sunray burst red lacquer dial and as you can see externally a special treatment has been rendered on the calfskin leather to give it that highly irradiated look that Godzilla periodically displays in his films. You can see the timepiece of course conventional calfskin on the underside. We have a trigger actuated deploying clasp and as you can see this is an extremely fresh example. The watch is also powered by a hot rodded spring drive caliber as underneath the case back featuring Godzilla himself, you can see there is a 9R15 movement. That is Spring Drive Plus, meaning you have the accuracy of standard Spring Drive, and we'll wind everything up and get it started. Spring Drive is accurate to 15 seconds a month, plus or minus, but this 9R15 is better than that, plus or minus 10 seconds a month. Recall that a Swiss COSC mechanical chronometer is minus four plus six seconds per day. This timepiece is much better. Three-day power reserve, automatic winding. You can see the, there's a power reserve indicator and the smooth sweep of the spring drive mechanism with no steps or staggers to the hand. Now this watch is also 20 ATM or 200 meters water resistant, meaning it is an exceptional timepiece for summer 2020. Hey, Godzilla might be 66, but this watch is still very much in style for 2020. Let's do a loom shot. The fire of Godzilla by night. As you can see, the entire bezel and center dial have been illuminated. This is a watch that surprises and delights in every regard. Sticking with our Grand Seiko theme here, let's go from Spring Drive, which is a unique fusion of mechanical and quartz, to a purebred. This is the SBGJ. 233, a timepiece launched for 2019, technically part of the Grand Seiko Sport Collection, a combination of grade 5 titanium and virtually scratch proof blue ceramic. It's a fascinating polyhedron case style that is essentially a titanium core wrapped with ceramic. So, unlike a conventional ceramic watch, this one can't actually shatter. At worst, you replace the panel, which is held in place by screws. Now, the watch is a high beat GMT, automatic winding 10 beats per second, like an El Primero, two time zones, and a 55 hour power reserve in spite of that generous beat rate. Now you can see the bracelet itself is a combination of faceted alternately satin and polished titanium with the same treatment lavished on the ceramic center links. The watch is highly water resistant and as you can see a lovely quadrant style dial. It's been quartered like a hobnail with all applique indices and numerals. Let's take a quick look at the case back. This is a timepiece that features a lovely watchmaker made, watchmaker regulated and when the time comes watchmaker serviced lifetime movement. Now the watch is highly water resistant, being resistant down to 10 bar. It is 100 meters, so very swimmable. You can see that the clasp itself features several different apertures for adjusting the anchoring point of the bracelet, and you have a twin trigger deployment system, so you must actuate both triggers to pop it open. The watch is large at 46.4 millimeters, but it wears considerably smaller, with both ceramic and titanium being exceptionally light. You can see the watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears like a midsize, eyes closed I swear it's where it's more like a 40 millimeter in stainless steel. Those are the advantages of ceramic and titanium.
Okay, let's go to the highest high peaks of Swiss high horology. Not far from the Alps, this is a timepiece that is going to remind you De Bethune can also sail. Not just the Grand Sport model from 2015, this is the Grand Sailor, the rarely seen 100 meter water resistant DB28 GS Grand Sailor, or as I prefer to call it, Grand Mariner, is 45 millimeters in fired blue titanium with a matching De Bethune rubber strap and the famous floating lugs, which are spring loaded, transforming from 53 to 58 millimeters from lug to lug, depending on your wrist geometry. Now the watch is feather light and surprisingly thin at about 12 millimeters thick. This one doesn't ride proud of the wrist and it gives you all of the proprietary De Bethune tech that you love from the GPHG Egidor winning DB28. Let's take a closer look at the dial. You can see that this is a watch that includes a lot of original innovations. Twin self-adjusting barrels. You can see there's a little hidden power reserve indicator on one of the barrels. Six-day power reserve. Take a look at the balance bridge. You can see not only is it a full bridge basing the balance staff on each side with a special proprietary fired blue spring, but there's also ink block at center. So you have one, two, three shock protection mechanisms over a titanium and white gold balance built in-house to be minimally thermally reactive, which means it has a low coefficient of thermal expansion. Heat and cold do not affect its timing. The watch also includes a unique dog leg off-centered hairspring, a flat hairspring with the toughness of a flat hairspring, but with the concentric beating properties of an overcoil. Finally, there's another patented silicon escape wheel, so you have patent for the Patent for the twin self-adjusting barrels, patent for the blued titanium, patent for the shock protection, patent for the balance, one of six De Bethune has created, patent for the hairspring, patent for the escape wheel, all of this with a lovely micro light strake across the delta-shaped barrel bridge, and you'll note the black polished and fired blue titanium cap that bears the covers for the shock protection system. Now the watch, of course, beats away at four hertz, so it is a high beat watch in spite of its six day power reserve. 300 feet water resistant, and this is lucky number three. Throw it on the wrist, it is very comfortable. Like the Grand Seiko watches, this one wears light and wieldy and considerably smaller in effect on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. And again, this is the swimmable watch from De Bethune. And the hit parade of Haute de Gamme sports watches just keeps coming. Now we're talking about everyone's favorite independent from Geneva. This is a model that was originally launched in 2012, built through 2014 when it was replaced by the titanium variant. But this is the Line Sport Sontograph Sport from FP Journe. It's 42 millimeters in aluminum, and the aluminum was ultimately discontinued because FP Journe's factory was having a lot of trouble building these watches in series. It has no bearing on the build quality, which is immaculate but rather the profitability of the watch as sold by the OEM. Well, FP Journe's travails are your advantage, both in terms of rarity and lightness, as it, the watch, weighing less than 60 grams when sized, is one of the lightest mechanical complications you will ever encounter. It's also a swimmable watch with lovely rubber bumpers to protect the satin of the aluminum finish. It's aluminum inside and out, and that includes the caliber 1506 movement. Let's take a quick look at how this watch operates. Two patents on this watch, one of which is for the rocker system that actuates the chronograph. Now you can see there's a second escapement underneath the 1 100th of a second foudroyant. It is is a one one hundredth of a second register, allowing you to register a hundredth of a second, hence Santograph, the name of the watch. Now you'll also note there is a 20 second sub register and a 10 minute sub register. It is a loomed watch and you'll note it features the characteristic FP Journe dial side bolts as well as an inner bezel for the sub registers, all of which are smoked sapphire and unlike the standard Santograph, we do away with the tachymeters to open up the registers and give you these see-through centers so you can appreciate the movement from both sides. Now turn it over you can see caliber 1506 is made entirely of aluminum bridges and plates. The barrel is at center, and here's the second patent in this watch. The chronograph is driven off the arbor, or basically the axle of the barrel, and then you can see the toothed edge, that drives the time of day. So there's no loss of amplitude and thus no compromise of timing precision when you start the chronograph. The watch has an 80 hour power reserve when the chronograph is not running, 24 when it is, but then again with a 10 minute being the largest register, you're probably Probably not going to run the watch full time. It is absolutely pancake flat at just about 11 millimeters thick. This can absolutely be your all the time watch for every occasion, and it probably should be. If you want to buy FP Journe discontinued, highly collectible, and suitable for summer, this is the way to go. Hey, let's do a loom shot.
Okay, and we are back with the Santagraph Sport by Night. I don't know if my camera is going to acquire this one, but it's a lovely look and it's plenty of loom, all indices and numerals as well as the hands. Autofocus can only take you so far. Now, let's talk about a watch made for one year. It's a Rolex GMT Master II. It's white gold with a blue dial and an oyster bracelet. Does that sound collectible to you? Likewise. This is the 116719 BLRO. The Pepsi as built for 2018 only. Of course, that was the year we got the steel Jubilee bracelet GMT Master II. And in order to set the previous white gold Pepsi bezel apart, Rolex gave the 116719 BLRO a blue dial for one year. It subsequently became the 126, which means this was a one-year Rolex GMT Master II on the Oyster Bracelet you can't get with the Steel Pepsi, meaning this is not only a great watch to wear day in and day out, but it's also an emergent collectible and already recognized as a scarce commodity and a future classic. It's flat on the wrist, comfortable, 100 meters water resistant, a COSC chronometer, and of course you have that bi-directional rotating aviator's bezel first conceived for Pan Am pilots in 1954. Today it's a wonderful way to calculate a third time zone, assuming you set the 24-hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time. You can read up to three time zones on this watch momentarily or on a full-time basis two separate time zones it has incredible solidity as the solid case back solid end links solid center links and milled clasp mean that this white gold watch wears like any other brand's platinum watch truly imposing impressive highly collectible and a ton of fun if it weren't beautiful i wouldn't recommend it but this watch isn't just about collectability or investments it's about wearing an absolutely bonkers fun modern day rolex every day all the time All of which said, you guys know me as a turnograph man, the first serially produced Rolex rotating bezel sports watch. Yes, I'm ignoring the zero graph. 12 models does not count. 12 examples does not count. This watch, launched in the early 1950s, actually preceded the Rolex Submariner by a short period as the first serially produced rotating bezel Rolex sports watch. Initially intended as a traveler's watch, it was later adopted as service issue by the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. So the, effectively, the Air Force version Version of the Blue Angels in the Navy. Now, the watch, as a result, is nicknamed the Rolex Thunderbird. By the late 1950s, the Turnograph had become part of the Datejust family, and it remained so until 2010-2011 when it was discontinued. This is the 116263 in yellow gold and stainless steel, 36 millimeters by only 11.6 millimeters thick. It has that bi-directional Turnograph bezel, and as you can see, it is a lovely chalk white dial with yellow gold appliques. It's still 100 meters water resistant and a chronometer, and Oops, there goes my new lighting. So much for technology. As you can see, we're gonna roll the watch all the way out of its danger zone. The timepiece features a lovely all red on white date. So don't mistake that for a roulette date. That is the all red. And I actually think that's a lot of fun. It's bright, it's cheerful, it's in character for this watch, which is really a lovely Miami Beach watch, an LA watch, it's a French Riviera watch. This is a timepiece that has a tropical ambiance about it. It's all about summer fun, even in the depths of winter. Let's talk about some dress watches for a change, and this is about as good as they come. 39 millimeters in platinum, and you can see it has the diamond between the lugs at six o'clock. This is the Patek Philippe 5450P, launched in 300 pieces in 2008 to inaugurate the third phase of Patek Philippe's advanced research series that started back in 2005 with the 5250, and continued to this model, which is an annual calendar, and all of the attraction, the appeal, the innovation is on the reverse side. As this watch, the third of the Advanced Research Series, integrated the anti-magnetic silicon hairspring with the unlubricated full silicon escapement, so both the anchor and the escape wheel, and you have a case back built-in loop so you can fully appreciate all of those advanced features. Now the watch is just a lovely timepiece to wear daily because all in platinum, you really feel the heft of it and the substance. The annual calendar was Patek's original innovation launched in 1996. They created the annual calendar. So a Patek annual calendar in a Calatrava case is the way to go. If you wanna 
key in to the roots of this movement, this complication, this original innovation combined with a power reserve indicator up at 12 o'clock. The combination of the platinum case, the domed bezel, and the salmon dial with white gold hands and indices is absolutely stunning. Wearing well on any wrist, I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference. And if you're a true Patek diehard, try to collect all of the advanced research watches. The four calendar watches and the Aquanaut travel time, you're well on your way with this 5450. If we want to go bold with rose gold, I can't think of a better way than with the Patek Philippe 5131R. As you can see, this one features the cloisonne enamel Asia Pacific dial, and this is achieved by up to 20 firings of the vitreous, that is glass-based enamel paint. It's built on a solid gold base, and then these little cloisons, or wires, are used to create the images of the landmass. Now, different colored vitreous paint as well as different thicknesses used to create the different colors, tones, and darkness. So this is an entirely handmade dial and that's before we get into the rest of this handmade watch. But Tech Philippe in good taste featuring its marquee up at 12 o'clock on the bezel and the city of origin down at 6 o'clock. The 39.5 millimeter 5131 is a more substantial Calatrava style case and as you can see on my wrist it does appear larger than most Patek Philippe dress watches. Almost 50 millimeters lug to lug. It has an impressive wingspan and a presence that the subsequent 5231 simply can't match. The timepiece also includes the famed Patek Philippe and Louis Cotier designed world time system. So let's say I am in Sydney and I want to travel to Hawaii. Well, the watch does all of the math for me as I need not adjust the hour hand. A world time powered by caliber 240 HU, you can see it's a gorgeous movement. Micro rotor automatic with a 22 karat winding mass does a 38 to 48 hour power reserve 33 joules, five position adjustment like a chronometer, and it features both a silicon anti-magnetic hairspring and a free-sprung Patek Philippe Gyromax style balance. Patek has been doing the Gyromax since about 1950, and it was one of the real originators of the free-sprung balance concept, which allows a more precise adjustment and also better shock tolerance. You can see the micro rotor allows the watch to be thin, but also gives you a full unobstructed case back view while still preserving the convenience of an automatic winding system. This is a gorgeous watch. You buy it first and foremost for the dial. Whether you are in the US, North America, South America, Oceania, Russia, the Indian subcontinent, or East Asia, just about everyone except Europe gets in on the fun with this dial. That said, my favorite Patek of the day, and one of my favorite of all time, is the 5975 triple scale chronograph. It is based on the evocative lines of the vintage reference 2525, and you can see that particularly in the lugs. It is one of the strongest and most sophisticated case designs Patek Philippe has crafted since it started making its own cases in 1981. Now this watch, 400 pieces in white gold, a limited edition launched in 2014 for the 175th anniversary of Patek Philippe. The timepiece featuring a triple scale dial, we'll talk a little bit about that because it's kind of fun. It has a seconds only fly back chronograph that allows you to gauge the pulse of a patient, the distance of a sound or report, think field artillery, and the speed of an object over a closed course, such as a standing mile or a standing kilometer. The pulsation scale, here's how it works. You fly back and you count while observing the pulse to 15 pulses and then you stop the watch. And as you can see at 15 pulses, if I stopped right there, the patient would be about 149 beats per minute. Let's continue. You could see that there is a telemeter and it's graduated four kilometers. So you watch the explosion in the distance or the explosion, let's say in peacetime of fireworks, and then you stop when you hear the report. Given the speed of sound at sea level, you can actually gauge the distance in kilometers from the report using the telemeter. Now, let's say we see a car starting a standing kilometer. When he reaches the end of the kilometer, that is when you are going to stop the chronograph. So if your car, let's say it's a jet car, crosses the kilometer now, you are going to be looking at a car traveling at hundreds of kilometers per hour. As you can see, the base 1000 
tachymeter is the central most scale with a snail pattern. Now the timepiece is exceptionally thin at only 10.5 millimeters. And you can see how sharp those black polished faceted and stepped lugs are. It features a commemorative case back noting the original foundation of the company by, we're going to use his franglicized name, Antoine Norbert de Patek. He was a Polish nobleman and cavalry officer who moved to Geneva and started building watches with Frantisek Jepek in 1839. And this watch was possibly the most interesting 175th anniversary model. You can even see that the clasp itself is customized and specific to the anniversary year. It's a lovely watch to wear on the wrist and absolutely smart with the sharpness of the case giving it a sports casual aesthetic I always like to use that term for a dress watch that's not just a dress watch, as you could easily wear this watch with short sleeves. In fact, I am right now. Because of the solid case back, the caliber 28 520 does not create an excessively thick profile, meaning it's not as chunky as a 5960 or a Nautilus calendar, or I should say Nautilus chronograph. Now the watch does feature the flyback, automatic winding, and a 55 hour power reserve with an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. So there is a lot of tech and fine finish in there. You're gonna have to take my word, the special commemorative case back is worth it, as is the thin profile that comes with dispensing the Sapphire, my favorite Patek Leap dial of the 2010s. Let's speak of a watch that can speak for itself. Launched in 2001, this is the Giger Le Coult Grand Memovox. I owned this watch in platinum for four years and it was an absolute dream come true. This is possibly the most useful watch you can buy. As the 41 millimeter rose gold case you can see here has a glorious master 1000 hours control shield on the back in matching red gold. This meant the watch had gone through a 1000 hour test of winding efficiency, power reserve, shock resistance, water resistance, and chronometric precision. Of course, the timepiece is substantial with a full rose gold deployant clasp and a perpetual calendar system as designed by IWC watchmaking master Kurt Klaus. Now JLC realized what IWC didn't, which is that mishandling the crown on the IWC version of this watch, or this movement I should say, you wind up accidentally setting the calendar ahead by days or months. JLC decoupled the crown from the setting mechanism, but it is still a mechanically programmed movement. So as you adjust the date, everything moves in sync, including the moon phase, the year in the decade, so you cannot accidentally make up a combination. All you need to do is set the correct date, and the watch is programmed. It already knows how to arrange itself. So if you can push one button, you can set this perpetual calendar. Now, the calendar system is by Kurt Klaus, but the basic movement itself was the JLC 918 Memovox, which means the tractor caliber that drives this remarkable multi-complication is an alarm watch, and I will demonstrate that now. It features a hanging internal bronze gong that allows it to resonate with wonderful singing sustain and chiming rather than rattling sonic impact. It's both a beautiful watch and a beautiful sounding watch. Throw it on the wrist, I loved this watch in platinum. Mine was a little bit heavier, but this one is still very substantial. As you can see, it's not chunky on the wrist. It's the best of both worlds with the IWC Perpetual Calendar System and the JLC Memovox movement. And I found that when I was wearing my full 10 watch rotation of JLC watches, this was the model that got the most wrist time, and most often, the watch that would travel with me. Now, FP Journ is probably better known for dress watches than sports watches, and the 38 millimeter case is where he started. The watch you see right here is the FP Journ Octa Lune, or Octa Fuzz de Lune. White gold dial, platinum case, 38 millimeters, a model discontinued ultimately in 2014, and as you see it here, only built with the original brass movement from 2002 to 2003. It is a rare piece. Now, of course, you have that limited production, factor in the 38 millimeter case as that was discontinued for 2015. The model itself was discontinued in 2014. The brass calibers were discontinued in mid-2004. The French-made Eleanor cases were discontinued in 2008. There is a lot to love about this watch. In so many ways, it represents discontinuity, which is the single greatest determining factor for the collectability of an FP Journe watch. It is rare. It also features a stamp on the case back, as you can see, 
03 being the year the case was made. Not necessarily the watch, it could have been assembled after that, but the case itself was made by Eleanor outside of Paris, F. P. Jorn's original case maker in 2003. Now, it is a smart, svelte, and easily worn watch that's only about 44.5 millimeters lug to lug and 10 millimeters thick, meaning it wears well under a cuff, and it's also a viable unisex option if you're looking for an absolute brass ring collectible watch from a super premium brand, but you don't necessarily have a taste for huge watches, or maybe you don't have a huge wrist. Maybe you're a woman with a slighter wrist and a taste for watches that are not diamond, quartz, and small. This watch is none of those things. It has a strong case band. There goes my light again. And as you can see, it does feature that brass movement. This is the first generation Octa Caliber 1300 bi-directional winding, as the earliest versions were. That was discontinued in roughly 2007. So not only does it feature its original rhodium-plated brass brass bridges and plates, but it also has its original winding system. These are often replaced at the factory with unidirectional. Original is best from a collector's standpoint. Now it has a five day rated power reserve, but reality is more like seven days. It features a quick set for both the moon phase and the double digit date, and it features five position adjustment as F.P. Jorn's goal ultimately with this watch was a chronometer level of timing precision with an automatic watch. Goals he once assumed to be mutually exclusive achieved with the Octas. And at 38 millimeters, this is a gorgeous watch watch that blends the practicality of its size and long power reserve with the romance of the moon phase. Jumping back over to the sporty side of things, guys, I always like to include a watch that's more accessible, preferably several watches that are more accessible on the show. I happen to like Nick and Giles English the English brothers, who are quite literally English, building watches in London. This is a company that's been around since the mid-2000s and increasingly doing things the British way. Now makes many of their small parts and cases in the UK. They do all of their regulation in-house, and what you wind up with is an interesting hybrid of Swiss and English watchmaking. Well, add American to the roster with this Boeing Model 1, part of a collaboration announced in 2014 between Bremont, an aviation-themed watch company, and Boeing of the United States, this is probably the most attractive and versatile reference in the collection. Now you've got a sapphire cap over the bezel, you have a hardened steel case that is particularly scratch resistant, you have the bezel action which is rotating, allowing you to line up the index with the minute hand, and note the black hands on the white dial base, absolutely legible, no expense spared, they have applique indices rather than printed. You'll note two features on this dial other than the simplicity. First, you can see that the watch has a one-sided Delta style indicator on the seconds hand, which I love. And second, you can see this chronometer, COSC certified, is shock resistant in a way that very few watches are. And you can see here a Salida SW220 in chronometer spec with a custom rotor and outboard rubber shock absorbers a la Richard Mille, allowing the watch to take an absolute pounding to no negative effect. Water resistant down to 100 meters, super shock resistant, and a chronometer. The timepiece is additionally secured to its scrap using screws and bars, and the strap, as you can see, is meaty. A combination of contrasting technical fibers, it is highly, highly tear resistant, and that's actually made of the same fibers used for aviation seat components. The watch itself has a lovely recessed case blank, and what they call the triptych case construction separates the case holding the dial and the movement from the lugs themselves. So this 43 millimeter watch wears absolutely easy on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Shock resistant, water resistant, a useful timing bezel, superb legibility, and a chronometer. You're getting a ton of watch here for under $4,000 from a rare British watchmaker. But let's say your tastes tend towards the finer side of things, dress watches, precious metal, and the ultra-thin. Well, for 2018, Bulgari answered your prayers with the 2017 GPHG men's watch winner, the Octo Finissimo Automatic, now rendered in a spectacular frosted red gold. Everything on this watch media blasted to create a handsome shimmering matte finish. You can see at only 5.2 millimeters thick, it disappears lower than your wrist hair. It's only 40 millimeters in diameter and 46.5 millimeters lug to lug. So this is one that wears easily on any wrist size. Although you can fit a standard strap, the spacing is 30 millimeters. So the horns of the watch, except a 30 millimeter bracelet or strap, giving it a nice broad planted stance on the wrist. This is a rare, 
instance of a heritage design, the Octo, inherited from Gerald Genta circa 2000, effectively becoming the face of a different brand, Bulgari, in time. And that is, to Bulgari's credit, taking something that was great, that worked, and not being embarrassed or afraid of something not invented here, taking the best of the old Gerald Genta work of the Valet du Jeu and incorporating it into the Bulgari ethic. Now, as you can see, there are acclaimed 110 facets on this case. A little bit like the Iron Throne, I'm just going to take their word for it. I haven't counted. 2,000 swords, 110 facets, I'm not sure, but it looks great. My favorite feature is that the dial is made of the same media blasted material, and inboard you can see the juxtaposition of the polygon, inner bezel, with the circular outer bezel and crystal. Now turn it all over, and this is probably the most impressive part of the watch. Caliper BVL138, 36.6 millimeters in diameter. The watch is 5.2 millimeters thick. The movement is only 2.23 millimeters thick. So it's broad, it's flat, it's built specifically for this case. It has a platinum micro rotor and a big boy 55 to 60 hour power reserve in spite of the thin profile. This is a spectacular watch and easily the equal of any dress watch from the likes of AP Vacheron and heck why not Patek Philippe. Now this is a timepiece that combines a little bit of machine finishing and manual finishing, but the concept and the execution are so impressive that I rank it co-equal with those Haute de Gamme rivals. Okay, briefly alternating between watches from the Valet du Jeu, we jump back to Chagère Le Coult and a model that came out in 2008, the tribute to Polaris Memovox, a diving alarm based on the definitive 1968 E859 diving alarm. Yes, there was a 65 and prototype circulated as early as 1963, but 68 was the watch that made the name for the Polaris. This one is one of the most accurate re-editions I've encountered. Like the original, it includes a domed plexiglass. You can see that it features the original quadrille or quartered crowns, three crowns. The one in the middle actuates a bi-directional rotating diving bezel and the watch is 200 meters water resistant. The one up at two o'clock winds and sets the alarm as well as operates the quick set for the watch. It features a 42 millimeter steel case with minimally beveled lug profiles and a thin mid case, all of high polish like the original. And you can see on the case back the original symbol of the super compressor case, the diving helmet. The case was made by Irvin Picarez and it was featured on many different watches from many different brands. You're familiar with the Volcan Cricket Nautical, the IWC Aquatimer, a million others, but the Gigero Le Coult Polaris was the prince of them all. And you can see that there is an internal resonator chamber with 16 perforations as on the original. The watch was a limited edition of 768 in steel with the Polaris 68 dial, making this version of the Polaris rarer than the original watch. Now, of course, the 956 is an impressive modern day Memovox alarm. Just like the Grand Memovox, it sounds impressive and it will wake you up. If you were to wear one watch for life, this would be a great candidate. Now, it features a embossed strap that is sort of a rubberized leather. It's designed to look like the original Tropic rubber strap. It has the same embossed pattern as well as the diamond-style perforations, but it is a calfskin strap. This watch includes a particularly entertaining boxed set and accessories, one of the all-time greats from JLC, and a bit of a classic in its own right. Let's do a loom shot. And you can see the Polaris 68 by night with those signature tri-Arabic numerals. All right, guys, it looks like my lights are ganging up on me today. Let's talk about a watch from a perennially underrated brand. This is Blancpain of Les Brassoux, a neighbor to Audemars Piguet. It's often regarded as a dive watch manufacturer, and that's a shame because Blancpain makes some awesome dress watches, and this is one of them. This is, and I'm just going to translate the French name, the Villeray Half Hour Eight Day with enamel dial and the ability to set a secondary time zone, take note, in one half hour steps 
so you'll see the hour hand moving minimally and the minute hand jumping in half hour steps. This allows you to use almost all of the localities around the world, not just the 24 principal time zones, but local time zones that we use half hour steps. Now you've got a day night indicator, you've got the secondary time zone, you've got the date, you've got a power reserve indicator, and it's a lovely watch because ultimately, pardon me, this is not the power reserve indicator. This is a lovely mode selector that I absolutely adore. And as you can see on the reverse side of the case, it is a movement that is the 5235DF with eight day power reserve, anti-magnetic. This is a timepiece that offers you almost everything you could ever want. Ah, the light came back. Thank goodness. Now you can see it's beautifully finished and I needed the light to give you the most of this. The best of this watch is, is enjoyed effectively without a loop because the bevels are so broad and mirrored that you're going to find ultimately they are a cinch to observe and to enjoy without magnification. You have the scalloping of the winding mass and as you can see it is a free sprung balance just like you'll find in the 50 fathoms so it is an exceptionally tough watch and you can see that although it does not include a running seconds hand it does have a hacking seconds function. Now you can see when you're using the function selector, you can choose how the watch will set. My colleagues in the hall are enjoying their day. Now you can see it's jumping in half hour mode. And now you can see it's setting in coordinated mode. So that's how that watch works. This is possibly one of the coolest dress watches you can buy. Not only is it beautifully made internally and beautifully made externally, but this is a watch that's really useful. 42 millimeters and exceptionally thin. It's also an easy watch to slip underneath the cuff. Now the rose gold here is intense. I'm not gonna lie to you. The combination of the white dial and the rose gold is an explosive. Visually, this watch is fire. But at the end of the day, Blancpain is so much more than a dive watch brand. Please folks, we all say it online. We nod in acknowledgement. Let's live the example. Give this watch a new home. All right, now let's talk about the most controversial watch of 2019, not because it's bad, but because honestly, this watch doesn't photograph well. A beautifully made watch that's technically impressive, this is the Audemars Piguet Code 1159 chronograph. Now what you'll note here is that this is the 41 millimeter rose gold variant with blue lacquer dial and rose gold dial furniture. It has a number of elements that make it particularly appealing, starting with the way it fits. First of all, it's a very thin watch. And as you can see, it's also remarkably detailed in pro profile, most photographs online look like this. So not only do you not see the depth of the dial, but you don't see this dihedral V-shaped crystal. It's actually higher at the edges than it is in the middle. Online, you don't see the hexagonal screws that retain the bars fixing the strap. You don't see the evacuated lugs. You don't see the fact that the mid case itself is faceted in octagonal form to reference the Royal Oak. You don't see that the buckle is unique to this model and it too features the Royal Oak referential hexagonal screws. Turn it all over, you have the next generation Audemars Piguet automatic chronograph caliber 4401 column wheel and vertical clutch free sprung with a full balance bridge 70 hour power reserve this is not just a chronograph this here is a flyback chronograph technically impressive and accomplished it debuted on this watch this is a watch expensively made that does not register when you're looking at flat photographs online from this angle they don't do justice to this watch this does justice to this watch this does justice to this watch this does justice to this watch this is a watch that is misunderstood please understand these things are gorgeous and increasingly a bargain and underrated And now we discuss something that was new for 2018 that might be your summer fun watch for this year. At 45 millimeters in carbon fiber, this is the Roger Dubuis Excalibur Spider Skeleton Flying Tourbillon. Let's move that minute hand out of the way. And it is all of those things with a honeycomb 
composite internally and a carbon composite externally, you can see that this case is elaborately CNC machined. You'll also appreciate that Roger Dubuis that year implemented a quick swap strap system so you can easily and readily accessorize this watch and as simply as the strap pops out, it pops back in, allowing you to change colors, change strap materials, and change the character of your watch. The movement, the RT509SQ, is entirely rendered in carbon fiber, and as you can see, adjacent to the crown features the Poisson de Genève, a lovely evacuated movement. It bears all. As you can see, the Celtic cross atop the tourbillon, beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is a one-minute tourbillon that acts as the second scale. The timepiece features the 90-hour reserve, and as you can see, it is an absolute beauty on both sides. The unusual use of carbon in a Geneva Hallmark movement, an innovation of Roger Dubuis. Now, the watch is swimmable, though not deep diveable, and when you throw it on a smaller wrist, you're going to be surprised that it actually wears decently. This is a timepiece that allows you to quickly and easily uh, accommodate almost any wrist size because the way it's shaped just arcs down and around your wrist. Roger Dubuis realizing you can make a bigger watch, but you cannot make a bigger customer. It's an 88 piece limited edition, so these are not common. But if you want Richard Meal aesthetic, but with a watch that's actually technically accomplished, this is the one to get. Roger Dubuis making its own cases, bridges, plates, escapements, balances, and hairsprings. It is so much more integrated. It shows so much more respect for the customer than Richard Mill. This is not a marketing exercise masquerading as a watch. This is a watch that needs a better marketing campaign from one of the true haute de gamme brands in low volume. At well under 10,000 pieces a year, their volume is comparable to Richard Mill. This is the right answer if you're thinking about an RM. That said, if you want to consider an absolute knockout for a fraction even of the cost of the Excalibur, this is the 2011 titanium 45 millimeter Pulsion skeleton flying tourbillon. Once again, we feature a Geneva Hallmark flying tourbillon with the Celtic cross. This one black polished. Once again, a full manufacture product. Once again, we're talking about a sports watch, but here 100 meters water resistant with spline screws fixing a full encompassing sapphire crystal atop the case. The case is grade five titanium, feather light, hypoallergenic, and more scratch resistant than 316 steel. It is also a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, 100 meters water resistant, Geneva Hallmark, 60 hour power reserve, flying tourbillon, all of these things in a watch that wears easily on a smaller wrist, comfortable. Once again, Roger Dubuis, an ace in ergonomics. This is the better alternative to Richard Meal. It's also a more interesting alternative to the likes of Royal Oak Offshore, as if this said Royal Oak concept on the dial, it would be a six-figure watch, not under $50,000. Truly special from a truly special brand, this is possibly one of the most underrated sports watches you can find anywhere at any price. All right, guys, we reached the end of our program. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of anything you saw here. As ever, reach out to me directly with your questions and queries. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.